So for context, where are you at right now financially with the agency? Around, we had one of our biggest months. We've been like pretty steady at like 83K, um, like set like 75 to like 83K per, per month cash collected um, on a monthly basis. Um, but we've only been there for probably the last like six to eight months. And then before that, we've been hovering around like 45 to 55K per month. What's up guys, Jordan here. Today we're joined by Liam. Liam is a member of the Athlon Academy and also owns Reliable Leeds. He's from Australia, but right now he's actually in Africa, jet setting around, <laughs> doing a bit of traveling, living like a nomad. Love to see it. Uh, now I wanted to get Liam on for a long time now. He's been absolutely smashing it for a very long time with his agency. Uh, and I think he's got a lot to share with you guys regarding his uh, lead gen agency today. So Liam, firstly, thanks dude. I know this has been a long time coming for us. Uh, secondly, it'd be great for you to give people a bit of a backstory, like thinking back to when you actually launched your agency or just before that, actually, can you bring us up to what brought you to the point of launching the company? For sure. Yeah. I mean, firstly, thank you so much for having me. It's really appreciate it. It's awesome to catch up. Um, but I mean, do you want like from the start of like kind of what brought me to just like first, like launch the agency? Yeah. Like, like what happened? What was the transition before you even were an agency owner? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it started where most people's journey start, just kind of like getting that first initial realization that you know that you don't want to do the traditional thing of, you know, just getting a job and working for someone else, the kind of cliche stereotypical thing where you're like, I don't want to work for, for someone. And I kind of always had that general, uh, general intention, but I just didn't really know where to direct it. And I kind of I never took, I never got really serious with anything and I never went in any like specific direction and kind of just started going down the make money online rabbit hole. And this was probably like late 2017, early 2018. Um, and at the time I was like, I was doing a degree studying full time at uni and um, before like I started uni in like, yeah, 2016, I had done a few like entrepreneurial things done like a few like startup competition events like in in different universities in australia they'll host these like weekend events where you can, it's kind of like a workshop and they take you through a workshop of thinking of a startup idea and you have to like pitch it to a panel of investors and that was kind of like my first introduction to entrepreneurship and the first thing of like i tasted success in because we won one of those competitions and while i was in high school we like had to do a pitch in front of um like competing against university students and we won some money with that um and that was kind of like my first kind of like tangible because I guess throughout school um you don't really get like any recognition or reward for doing anything like that it's obviously it's just like academic and so that was my first kind of like I think that was like my first kind of I guess like wake up to like okay like this is like something viable like I got like rewarded from doing something in that in that kind of space um but then I didn't really do anything for probably two years after that um like actually trying a business model like i you know went down the like i said make money online rabbit hole looking at you know drop shipping amazon fba like affiliate marketing um agency was was one of the ones that i came across and um just like initially like the agency business model was the first one that really clicked with me where i kind of saw it i understood it and i was like yeah i can see myself doing that and marketing in general was always like the main thing that i was interested in and that's what i was marketing and advertising was what i was studying at university um and so in like early to mid 2018 was when i first like did my first agency program and like did a course and took it seriously and then started executing um and so yeah, it's like been just over four years now since I first kind of like officially, you know, started um, having a go at the agency business model. And that's what got me into it. It was just kind of like, yeah, observing all the make money online business models. And it was just the one that made the most sense to me and resonated with me. And I was like, like selling a service, you know, paying, like, you know, people are paying you $1,500, $2,000 a month. Like I'm offering a service that makes sense. Like I'm getting other people, clients and customers, they make money, I make money. Like it just clicked with me. And yeah. so um, then I started doing it. And then um, like the first thing I started doing was real estate was the first niche that I picked um, just because that was like the first one, like in the first course that I did, it was the first niche suggestion that was like, 
that made sense in terms of how much value you were providing to the end client because, mm-hmm. you know, you get a real estate agent, a listing, they make, you know, 10 to sometimes 30 grand for, um, in, in commission from that, from that lead. Um, and so that made sense to me. I was like, okay, if I'm going to provide a service, might as well provide it to a client where they're making a lot of money on the back end, so I can command higher prices. Um, and then I just started cold calling real estate agents. And then like, I, that's actually all I did. Cause that's like all I knew, like what, how you got clients. Um, and that's probably how I got my first seven clients, just cold calling. And then that kind of validated it for me. Um, and it kind of just snowballed from there and been doing it literally ever since. And I actually haven't like veered from working with real with the real estate industry since day one, um, just cause it was what was working and I just nice. kept building on top of it. And yeah, now we're here and we're still doing it. <laughs> Love it, man. You were so fortunate to, you were probably, you're probably one of the only people actually I know that have that, that was fortunate enough to work with it in a niche at the start and then still be working with them now. Because most people are yeah. like, oh, they'll try everything and then just like don't enjoy working with 90% of niches and then stumble yeah. across one. But yeah, to be honest, it wasn't like strategic. It was just that I was kind of stubborn and like, sometimes like almost just lazy that I didn't want to go through the effort of just like changing everything to switch nation. I was like, I'm going to make this work. Like I just want to, I just, like, I don't want to switch. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was just kind of persistence to be honest. For sure. So, so putting yourself into like the shoes of like how it was when you first started the agency, what, how did it, how was it jumping into sales? Like, did you have, I mean, cause cold going cold, cold, straight into cold calling, especially with real estate agents. One thing I always say about real estate is, I mean, you're selling to a salesman, right? You're selling every single person yeah. in the office as a salesperson. So did you have cold calling experience before that? And if not, was that intimidating? Yes, it was very intimidating. I didn't have any experience. And I definitely was completely ignorant to that context of like that it was harder to sell to real estate professionals. And in retrospect, I think about the conversations that I was having with people. I was like, these people must have just been thinking like, what is this like what is this kid talking about and like and i would just like show up to these and, and every single meeting that i did i didn't even know like that zoom existed at the time or that you could do like you could make sales over yeah. um over a phone over a phone call or anything like that and so i just assumed like every single client you had to sign was an in-person meeting and so that's what i was doing i was just like only calling like people in a vicinity that i could drive at least like within like a 40 minute to an hour radius and i would just like call them up with the intention of like asking for an in-person meeting um, and that's what I did. I just like called them up, said like, Hey, do you want to have a meeting? Like I'll meet you at your office. And in retrospect, I actually think that that's like one of, one of the reasons why I actually got my foot in the door. Cause I just like went to them and I didn't like, it was zero inconvenience to them. Like wasn't interrupting their schedule. And I guess like, they're like, yeah, this person's going to come to me. They must be like pretty confident. Um, but I, it was literally just because I didn't like think of any other way to do it. It wasn't strategic whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but like, I hated it. Like I, I was super scared to do it. And, um, but it was like I said, it was just cause I didn't think there was any other choice or any other way to do it at the time. Cause it was pretty early days in the, in the whole SMA space. Like there wasn't anywhere near as much like YouTubers, nowhere near as much yeah. <clears throat> like different courses out there and like so many strategies that are out there now no one was even talking about them and so it was just like yeah like cold calling was just one of the main ones that people were talking about um and so it's just what i did yeah it's like i just have to do this like (laughs) yeah i can i can i can reason with that and relate to it because i know when and one of the reasons that i never went for real estate when i first started my agency is because i've had to sell to real estate agents beforehand for like a year (laughs) like i had a job i don't know if you have in australia but you know like the for sale signs that go out the boards that go out of people's in front of people's houses well in in do you have those like yeah sign boards right yeah that's it so but in the uk like there's a company that actually puts those up on behalf of agents as opposed to like so I worked, I was the business development director for that company. So I'd have to sell the contracts to, the, to like, uh, to like the corporates and like, and get all the franchises and stuff. Cause most of the <laughs> stage franchises. So, yeah. um, but I would basically, they would put me in a different city, like every two weeks. And I'd have to physically walk around and drive around to every single real estate agent, walk in and sell face to face. And like, I just remember like at the start of doing that. Like, that was like a cold interaction, like in person. Cold interaction, <laughs> walking in the door, like 10 <laughs> eyes on you, like, who is this kid? And you're just like trying to sell them a service. And like some of these places you're going into and you're getting grilled from start to finish, but it like thickens you up. So I was like, screw this. I'm not doing real estate in my agency. Um, yeah. 
because it's it's not the easiest industry to get in with. And likewise, so like what you said about like delivering a service, like like well, I don't know if you mentioned that, but you said like not many. It's the early days of SMMA. Like I imagine it was quite hard to learn how to deliver results to real estate agents because it used to be very much like many chat and messenger bots and so on and so forth. I don't know where that's developed to now, but I know back in the day it wasn't the easiest strategy to implement either. No, yeah, and I like the first client that I signed. I had no idea what I was doing, and like the first courses that I did didn't have any um training whatsoever on like niche specific service delivery and so i was literally just like yeah just like madly youtubing and googling of just like how to get results for real estate agents how to do it's like lead gen for real estate agents and just kind of figured it out and just made it up on the spot with like the first few clients and then i eventually like and probably one of the main things that i recommend doing for agency owners wanting to like learn service delivery in a specific niche which is what i ended up doing was just like finding people that were um finding people that were selling programs directly to like the the niche not people teaching it to agency owners so like i found people that were teaching like like a course direct to real estate agents how to how to do their own lead gen and so um they're obviously because i feel like uh like i don't know i feel like some um like some programs like are not directly incentivized to go extremely to be extremely comprehensive and go extremely in depth for like Mm -hmm. need specific service delivery and so if there's like a program that's like dedicated to just like how to do it directly for the business owner like if there was a uh, some kind of program that was like built where the client for that program is dentist practice owners and it's like how to get how to run facebook ads for like dentist practice owners i don't know just as a random example it's like you're probably going to get pretty good information from that of how to get results and so that's what i did that was like the first time that i actually got a, a proper like comprehensive strategy in in yeah. place and was able to get really good results that's really interesting that's a very interesting take because like in most courses and training you're getting like the second hand lesson it's like let me teach you yeah. to, to get results for real estate agents apart from instead of like let me just help you as a real estate agent get results so like it's actually interesting because um literally last week there's a there's a big agency uh actually i'm pretty sure no they're they're, they're new zealand based um and they are they're a very large agency doing like 400k a month and they work with uh, e-commerce but they got they just get incredible results for e-com companies massive corporate e-com companies as well not just like yeah. small 100k a month like 10 mil a month e-com companies now they they have just built out this internal training program to hire their new media buyers where they're essentially just teaching they're teaching like um, no they're not even teaching uh, the media buyers it's like an ascension program for their clients where they're teaching really um, mm. e-com companies directly in their media buying team in their marketing department how to get results for themselves and we're like you need to sell us this shit because like yeah you guys i've seen like the kind of clients you're working with i've seen the, the kind of results you're getting and they're just teaching e-com directly and we've bought that and we've like in- integrated that into our team because exactly like you said it's direct to source and not like secondhand knowledge yeah yeah i think it's the general good rule of thumb to just like if you can try and go to the source um and like obviously different like sources of education for like uh, serve different different roles and purposes um but yeah no 100 and also though like in retrospect i think like one of the mistakes that i made which I, everyone makes like along the way trying to scale their agency is just taking too long to realize that you can't like be the bottleneck for like trying to you you trying to figure out the strategy for everything in the business like at some point it's better to just like you just hire the person that already knows the strategy and has already done it before and it like it took me way too long to figure that out to instead of like always thinking oh i have to like learn sales to the highest level before i bring on a salesperson or i have to learn appointment setting to the highest level before i bring them on or i have to be the like i have to you know understand my service delivery to the highest level before i hire a good media buyer um and like you know like one of the things that i i remember watching one of um alex Hamosi's live and like one of the lives on instagram and like he got a question is like how do you build a good sales team and he was just like hire a sales manager that's built a good sales team and it's like it's just so obvious it's so simple but so obvious um yeah. and so i think there's always that like people talk about that resistance in early stages of their agency of like you know you have to take one step back to take two steps forward like hire the person like so, so that you can free up your spec free up your capacity and get to the next stage of the business but <clears throat> for some reason you f- you still forget that like along the way at high levels of scale and it's like 
you get to like 30K per month, you get to 50K per month. And like, even though that is the solution, you can still have resistance to doing it because it shows up in a different context. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think that that's, that's a big one for sure. Yeah, for sure. Really important to hire a star talent. So you, at what point did you start hiring in the agency? What kind of revenue level did you hit before you decided it was the right time to actually hire? And what was that first hire? Um, well, the first hire was a VA was like the very first hire. Um, and that was probably when I was at 12 to 15 K per month in revenue. Um, and that was for organic prospecting and outreach and getting, cause I had like a really well dialed in organic prospecting strategy just for getting consistent sales calls book, just doing like outreach on like cold email, like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and just doing like, you know, consistent mass outreach across all those platforms. Um, but obviously like that takes up heaps of your time. And so the first hire was that VA to just be like full time on organic prospecting. Um, and then that was like the transition to significantly increasing sales call volume. Yeah. Um, and then that ramped up obviously our client acquisition. And then that meant that there was a lot of clients on board and I couldn't handle them. And so the next hire after that was media buyer. Um, and they were able to have like a, uh, like a 25, 20 to 25 client capacity, which is one of the good things about local business lead gen is that a media buyer can have a significantly higher client capacity because the operations and the fulfillment is a lot more simple and a lot more rec- replicable. Whereas with e like obviously every like niche has its pros and cons, but, um, compared to a niche like e where, you know, every single client has a significant more amount of operational complexity um and you de- like one media buyer can't manage that high amount of clients so that was yeah that was the kind of initial transition and then after that it was an appointment set up um after we like started running paid ads and then a sales rep and then like a client success manager and that's kind of the team right now is like va media buyer um va media buyer appointments at a sales rep client success manager and then me so for context, where are you at right now financially with the agency? Around, we had one of our biggest months. We've been like pretty steady at like 83K, um, like set like 75 to like 83K per, per month cash collected um, on a monthly basis. Um, but we've only been there for probably the last like six to eight months. And then before okay. that, we'd been hovering around like 45 to 55K per month um, for about like a year and a half before that. Love that. That's wicked, man. Does the, yeah. what does the acquisition strategy look like? Are you paid? Are you running ads to the agency or are you still like organic? Purely paid actually. Yeah. We like really cut back on organic just because like I feel like organic can get, um, well, it, it wasn't that like organic stopped working at whatsoever. It's just that when like something is working so much better, it just like, it, it just makes more sense just to, just to do that. Um, and so we, um, probably about like a year ago now was like the first time that we like started doing paid ads for client acquisition for the agency with just a, a pretty simple direct offer lead funnel, just like a three-step funnel, like, yeah, like landing page, opt-in, name, phone number, and email, like VSL, and then opt-in, book call, thank you page, super bait, like a pretty standard funnel. And then um, once we started doing that, we just, yeah, got heaps of sales calls, heaps of sales calls booked, getting like, probably like 50 to 60 sales calls booked a month um, really, really consistently with only about like four grand a month on ad spend, like 3,500 to four grand a month on ad spend. That's, um, that's awesome. Like a hundred, like a yeah. hundred dollar cost per that. Cool. Yeah. 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 That's really, yeah. really cool. And the only, only way we're able to, like the only way that you can do that is with an appointment setter. Cause like you don't get, um, like the vast majority of those calls get booked from an appointment that are like calling all of your leads that are, that are opting in and like doing us like a, a huge volume of follow-up to the entire, to the entire pipeline. And so just have like a full-time appointments that are like every single lead that opts into the funnel, get like a, get like a 25 to $35 cost per lead. And then every single lead that comes into the pipeline gets like eight to 10 contact attempts and like followed up just forever, pretty much by yeah. an appointment setter and they just book in sales calls. Um, and so that was probably the biggest game changer for like client acquisition on our end and then like getting a, getting a closer on the team as well. Um, and yeah, like the first time we, cause like from organic, we'd probably consistently bring on like three to five new clients a month, depending on like when we needed to. Um, and then, yeah, when we started running paid ads, we 
like one of our biggest ones we brought on 16 new new um real estate clients um which was yeah one of the one of the biggest months but um yeah that's like been and we've cut back right now um but just because we're, we're maintaining our existing client base and i feel like in the agency usually like people kind of always talk about these strategies and they make it seem like yeah like they're always doing that month on month but like everyone like you go through kind of expansion and then like contraction phases of like you'll be really really ramping up client acquisition and then you've got to like restructure and deal with like you know the agency at a high level of scale and then you like you face new problems and then you run into like you know yeah. running a team at that scale and then you know you become less profitable and then you've got to restructure things and then scale back in yeah. um and so that's where we're kind of at right now in a bit of like an optimization kind of refinement phase same here. I mean, you're constantly going through this mess of like, you're basically rebuilding the entire company again. <laughs> like, like me yeah. and Joe have, or constantly having, we, we, like, me and Joe have like a director's meeting every month. And it feels like every month when we have that director's meeting, we're basically just restructuring the company based on how things are going. Like, more, probably more yeah. so every quarter, it's like when we have one of those really big chats. But um, cool. I want to, I want to, I want to just pick your brains on the uh, the ad side of things because I think I think it's one thing I see because obviously I teach a lot of e-com agencies um, yeah. but one thing I see time and time again with more so with with, with lead gen local agencies um, mm-hmm. and it'd be interesting to get your opinion on this because from my perception I'm, I'm, I'm yet to find um, some e-com agencies that aren't already really really large and by large I mean got big clients massive testimonials in-person interviews so on and so forth um, that have like really smashed it with paid ads, but I've seen a trend across so many different local agencies that are doing lead gen that the that that the biggest client acquisition process for them is paid ads. Um, yeah. So I suppose my question is is kind of two fat, multifaceted. Number one, like, have you noticed that same trend with the majority with 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 local being kind of paid ads and ecom being more organic? And if not, have you seen lots of agencies doing the latter? Um, and number t- number two, um, was actually, just more of a statement. It's really interesting that you have an appointment setter who calls up all of the leads on your VSL because that kind of goes against the grain of what you would normally do. And let's say another business uses a VSL, like an info business, when you're not actually qualifying those companies. But I suppose with an agency, that's all leads. But there are all people in theory who are suitable. If they actually have a business, they're all people that are actually suitable for your service. Um, and I think that probably a lot of people that are running ads right now aren't necessarily doing that. So if you are running Most ads, people least... aren't, yeah. And it's kind of like the secret source of making all that really work. Um, yeah. So like to answer your first question, I definitely think like the main reason why it works so well for more like local business niche clients, like like lead gen niches, like yeah, gyms, like real estate, like um, home services niches, like renovation companies, like painters, like um yeah den- dentists orthodontics whatever like all those local business um, companies is because just simply the pool of potential clients and the audience sizes are much larger like there's way more real estate agents than there are e-com business owners there's way more like dentistry you know dentistry offices than e-com business owners in a given audience there's way more all of those business types and so the ads just work better because it's a larger pool of potential clients and a larger audience in general um whereas i think e-com as well um the type of business owner because e-com business owners like digital marketing is like so directly ingrained in the core strategy and operations of the business that an e-com business owner is significantly more uh, a significantly more um advanced and sophisticated prospect and client type and so the standards are also significantly higher to get their attention and attract them with the type of messaging that you're putting in your ads and so i think you have to be a lot more professional and you have to have a lot higher quality content and video creatives um, and testimonials and yeah like in-person interviews and all that stuff in your ads um i've done like i was mentioning before the call like um one of my mentors that i've worked really closely that has a bit like, like one of the biggest e-com agencies in australia um he's like one of their main client acquisition channels is definitely um is definitely paid ads and most of their ads are not like the same types of ad strategies that we run in eco- in um, local business lead gen where local business lead gen ads for client acquisition is more kind of like you know kind of just direct offer like claims of like we'll get you x amount of leads or we'll get you like we'll help you achieve this result in this amount of time and it's more kind of just like stating your offer whereas the types of ads that they're running are more kind of 
passive based on social proof and just like results and like transformation claims. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's kind of what I've seen work. And I definitely think that there's a much more, depending on what scale you're at, like there's definitely a a need for a higher standard of like content execution and like having better branding. Whereas, you know, your, the types of conversations that you're having with a local business owner is like, convincing them that social media is a good idea in the first place, whereas, which is a completely different conversation. And they just like want someone that can just do it for them and they don't want to think about it. And they're like not tech savvy. Whereas they are, like I said, e-com business owners are significantly more sophisticated. So that's the first question. Very, um, yeah. That's, it's, just, yeah. A, it's very, very interesting taking and you are just spot on. Um, yeah, and the level of the level of content you are absolutely right does have to be a much higher quality. And I think that that we are this is one thing that we're working on very heavily at the minute is is is, is getting in the diary to fly over and visit clients and do strong in person interviews with those clients. So because I think there's so much, as everyone knows, there's so much bullshit in the agency space, um, and uh, and it's still ludicrous to me because obviously we we have thousands of people that go through our program. It's ludicrous to me how many people are blindsided by ecom and they're like, I want to start an ecom agency. And when, especially when they're first starting, like I think like you're clinically insane if you want to start an e-commerce business and agent, uh, e-commerce yeah. as a new start, right? Because you are yeah. literally fighting against every grain. Um, yeah. But I'd, I'd we- probably recommend like doing drop shipping and doing it yourself and then like being your own case study and being like, here, I did it for myself. Now I can do it for you. Yeah, do that. <laughs> exactly. which is a whole different beast, right? But, uh, but another yeah. thing that you have with local it's like you can pull together really fucking good offers. Like, I, yeah. so I just posted the mastermind this weekend, a bunch of agency owners already doing over 20K a month. There's one guy in there doing, doing actually there's three people doing local lead gen, but one of the guys has a really great offer and he is real estate and it is like 30 to 40 like qualified meetings like every month. Like, and he's like, he's doing that and he's got clients that he's had for like 18 months like he's had the clients for a long time. Like one of his clients has spent 40K of him. He's made 2.7 million for. Like, so like he's getting a huge return and he's got these massive bold promise offers that he delivers on with every single client, which is just absolutely incredible. And there's an e-com, like no e-com agency can make an offer like that. Like you just no. can't, oh, what are you uh, going to guarantee? Like a 10X ROAS? Yeah. Like there's too many variables that come into play. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. I think like, I think it could be done in, in e-com but like because it's the same like people have the same resistances in local business as well like especially for real estate because like it's the same thing like with because real estate is an example because that's what i know like when you're when the result of the client and like the sale especially in niches where that um like if i in retrospect like if i was going to go for a different niche where you can like have a lot more predictable results with um with yeah like with lead gen with the local business client you want to choose niches where the sales cycle is significantly shorter because the when the sales cycle is shorter there's less variables that can get in the way of the of the end result for example like like med spas like um like uh like yeah cosmetic dentistry like you know your chiropractors your physiotherapists mm-hmm. like your um your de- your, yeah, your, de- your dentist um gyms like because the purchase decision is very is very short. Not that I'm saying real estate is a bad niche; like it's it has its be- it has its um, benefits, being really really high ticket and a huge pool of potential clients, and like just a ridiculous amount of new real estate agents every single year, um, which is just like fresh fresh new client potential. But um, that's like the same kind of level of uncertainty into being able to have a bold claim and a bold offer because it's like, well, if I give you know real estate agents a lead. Like, are they going to be a good salesperson? Are they going to get the, like, are they going to convert the listing? And so it's like what you make your guarantee based on. And that's where like conditional guarantees come into play. And if you're like offering a guarantee, it's based on, do they meet the conditions to actually be eligible for that guarantee? Yeah. So that's yeah. the thing. I mean, every, every e-com agency offers guaranteed uh, profitable rise and guaranteed improving on the ROAS, right? It's like everyone offers that, but then actually the reality of it is, is that most companies don't actually hit that criteria. Um I so said one thing I've always said, and I've said it to people a lot of times, like if I actually ever started an agency from scratch again, which I'm obviously not going to put myself through. No. But if I did, I would start local lead gen and I would just do lead generation. But because of the sales experience I've got, I would offer a full stack service when we would actually close the leads within that industry that we were working with as well. Is that something yeah. you've ever considered doing? Or is that ever something you've tried doing? Like, what is your opinion on that model? Yeah, no, I think that... Um... 
I've yeah, I've done, I've tried doing it, and I've the way that I've doing I've been doing it because when that kind of became more popular um, in lead gen niches and in real estate, I was kind of at a transition phase of the agency where I got to a high level of scale, and it was kind of when I was having realizations like, do I want to be running the business at this scale, mm-hmm. and do I want to increase more operational complexity, and like you know, one of the things that I'm always thinking about is not like should I like make the business more complex or should I make it more simple and efficient? And um, because I kind of always like had the intention on the background, like me wanting to be spending more of my time on working with agency owners as well, I didn't go in that direction. But I think in general, like the um, to be competitive and to be like on the cutting edge, you have to provide more more value to the, to the market. And I think that's just the direction that the market is moving in. And you have to like, yeah, you, you, you have to be more competitive. Um, so you have to be more, um, you have to provide more, more value to be more competitive. And mm. it just makes a lot of sense because you're just taking more off the client's plate. You're taking more into your control. So you've got more predictability with client results. Um, and so the way that we've like executed on it, like the standard way that people execute on it is like providing like a, like an in-house, you know, inside, inside sales agent service or like some like concierge, like call center, call center service. And you've got, an appointment setter calling your clients leads they're booking them in for appointments whatever like that appointment means for your niche um and that's an incredible service it's an incredible value add and it makes a whole lot of sense and then you can like your offer can be like you're guaranteeing appointments um and yeah that's something we've been helping a lot of agency owners build build out and it makes a ton of sense because like a lead guarantee uh, an appointment guarantee is way more value than a lead a lead guarantee because it's just a more a better and a better end result. Um, but some of the things that we've been doing is we've been working um, like closely with some um, like property developers where because like the standard real estate lead gen service is like sell a lead gen for working directly with like an individual real estate agent or like a brokerage or a team. Um, but yeah, we've been working with a few more clients that are. Um, like a significantly more high ticket and some even like profit or revenue share on like on um, development projects, like an off the plan project where it's like an apartment complex of like 25 to like 36 apartments or something. And we're managing like the, like we're actually managing the sales team. Um, And so that's something that we've had to go at and I actually really enjoy it, really enjoyed doing that. Um, but that's more of like a hands-on kind of, kind of yeah. project and yeah. we're kind of doing the marketing and doing the set, like the sales team management and like doing the appointment setting and assembling the sales reps for the project and things like that. Um, but that's been, yeah, that's been cool. It's, it's great. And it's definitely, I mean, it's obviously definitely not something to be taken lightly by everyone who's, who's watching this, but I think, <laughs> I think what's really, what would be really be interesting. And again, something that I would not never say, but I don't really have the interest to pursue. I'd be on to different things by then, but um, it, it would be really interesting to see people do more of is more like an info um, agency hybrid as well because I think there's a lot yeah. there to be done uh, very similar to, to what Alex and Mosey did with, with Gym Launch really that's that's yeah. a, that's really an agency it's an info yeah, agency it was. hybrid 100% yeah. yeah and it's funny that he doesn't position himself as an agency no, and like yeah. Um, and yeah looking back like that was totally an agency and that's honestly like what i'm kind of considering moving moving into is more of like a done with you kind of agency hybrid of just like leveraging the ip of your strategy and just like yeah, doing a launch for the, for for that client type and just like installing yeah. the strategies and then making it so it can be handed it can be handed over um and so yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. See, that's that's the thing. I mean, like in in theory, like an ideal situation for my portfolio would be actually our agency doesn't work with e-com companies. It works with agencies and we provide an yeah. ad service to agencies. You and I both know though, like that's not an easy service to provide, right? There's, no. It's that's If I was going to go into a, a, a lead gen- Like a white label agency. It's not going to be a, a no. other agencies, right? But in theory, that is like, that's a very, that's a perfect business right there. You have a, you yeah. have a, you have a low, because, because the thing is with info is your, it's instant revenue for a product you've already built. So like, but I think that bringing it back to like, uh, like, like local lead gen, if you were offering like, a done with you kind of ads team service or even a, a sales team service or even like teaching your sales team within an info product you could let's say you, you in your position real estate you start a mastermind product where you get a whole bunch of real estate agents together who are already making a certain amount of money and you just pull in like the best 
and the best brains in that industry, like that in itself, you don't even need to be a real estate agent yourself to be able to provide value to that industry. Um, and I think, I think, I think that is, I think that is a, a, a sub niche that I, or just something that will emerge from agencies. I think that is a natural progression because I think because so many agency owners are exposed to the info niche, um, mm. it's such an attractive model um, that for yeah. anyone who's watching this right now that has the facility to do that in the future, I think that's definitely something for people to consider because it's just instant cash flow into the business. Don't get me wrong. You have to have the foundational agency to start off with. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think it's the natural progression of an agency really at large scale. Yeah. And when you kind of look at the natural progression of like, if you kind of just observe the industry over a long enough time horizon and you look at, you know, even like people like you, of like where you first started out, like you start with an agency and then you move to like a different niche that's maybe higher leverage. And then you like build an info product around the thing that you've, around the thing that you've done. And like, you know, obviously like you built an info product around helping agency owners, but you know, in someone's equal position, you could build an info product around just serving the niche that you've already been serving. Yes. Um, and I think the one big thing that people have like limiting beliefs around is charging like up, like big upfront costs for different services, like, you know, between, you know, 6,800 to like 15 grand for services because they've never charged that amount before. And they've always kind of thought about their products and services in like the monthly retainer format. Um, but that was probably like another one of the big um, game changers on, on my end is like, as soon as we started having a go at selling like, more like done with you versions of our offers where it was like a 5k upfront or like a 7k upfront payment that is really profitable not too you know complex or or um time intensive to fulfill but like taking you know bigger payments up front because you know if you're scaling client acquisition and every client that you bring on especially in local business niches that are like 1500 to 2500 dollars per month it takes a lot of clients to like really stack and scale your revenue so like if you bring on 10 new clients in a month and you're starting fifteen hundred dollars per month. You've added, you know, fifteen hundred dollars in month in in you know cash collected that month. But if you say sell two, you know, eight eight grand like done with you packages yeah. paid in full, then you've added sixteen, and that was two sales as opposed to ten, and it's like way more profitable and less time intensive to fulfill. And so I think like I think just like expanding your service offering in general once you've gotten to a good stage in the agency is just like makes a lot of sense. And I think it's something that people don't consider um, because yeah, you can just add so much revenue so, so quickly. Um, and that was one of the things that took us from like, like hovering and like struggling to scale around like 50, 55K per month to yeah, sh shooting to like adding 30, 40K per month revenue by selling some like, yeah, for some like six to 7K done with you packages. Um, Cause yeah, like I said, you sell like a few of those a month and that add, adds like 20 to 30K just like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, but that, but that is like, that's something you could only achieve and a point that you can only get to if you get so obsessed with your service that you know you can deliver an exceptional result to people. And I think that's a point that, that people, lots of people don't even get to that point because they're so set on how do I make more money, but they're trying to make money out of 2K a month clients that they can't even, they can't even deliver a good enough service to actually warrant really large retainers, like or what really large service-based yeah. fees. Um, no. Yeah. So do, do you, are you doing like, so I know you said you've got like upfront and then you have like, you have various different like undone with you services, but do you ever, have you ever played with paper lead models and have you tried that out? And what does that look like? Yeah, I have. Um, and I'm actually like recently like have tried, I've been testing the waters with it with like a, a few clients right now doing like pure performance with real estate agents where like they pay us like a flat commission fee per listing acquired um like one client that we recently onboarded which was actually like an old client that like we're working with for a year and then they went like worked with other agencies and then they've come back um there we're doing like fifteen hundred dollars per month per listing acquired and like we did the math on like when we're working with them for the first 11 month time period we brought them 32 listings which re which resulted in like it was close to like 400k in gci and so if we did that we would have made like close to 40, 45 to 50 K from that one client within that 11 month time frame, as opposed to us making like, it was like 18 K from our, or like 19 K from our monthly revenue. And so, but you can only do that if you are extremely strict with your client avatar and have a lot of data to know exactly what the characteristics of a, of a client are that you can be predictable for a performance fee, um, especially in real estate. I think you can you can do it a lot a lot easier in niches like where the sales cycle is shorter. Like I've seen 
agency owners absolutely crush it with like dentistry for like pay per show or pay per appointment um, because it's way more predictable to get that end result. Um, and the client is going to recoup the investment a lot more quickly because the sales cycle is shorter and they make the money back a lot more quickly. And so I think it's it's it works really well in some niches and, it, and it's harder to execute on in other niches and it's more complex. Um, but I think the best version of the way to do it is um is probably like pay per show with a um with a an isa or like an appointment setter model um yeah. because you've got full control over that end result like if you've got like a, a dialed in appointment setting team and they're booking appointments consistently and you've got like a pretty good baseline of what your cost per lead should be then you can pretty predictably like charge you know say like 300 to like 500 dollars for like pay per show um and like i've seen people work with big solar companies and they're billing like you know, solar, um, solar companies, like 15 grand a month, just for like one client wow. who are like paper, like paper show models and things like that. Um, so it, I think, yeah, hundred percent it's, it's high level. It's, it's obviously more operationally complex to fulfill, but for the right niche, it, it, you can make a lot of money if you do it the right way yeah. for sure. Awesome. I think it is just like you said though, it is, of course it is high level, but it's like this stuff, like when, uh, <laughs> There's going to be people watching this as, and we're having a very high level conversation. And by the way, I fucking love this shit. Like it's, yeah. nice, to have a it's nice to have a high level conversation and, and it doesn't feel right to bring this back to kind of entry level stuff now. So we're not going to, so guys just like take notes on this stuff. But so, <laughs> <Get another> one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think that like for a lot of people watching this, like it's like, it's all of these things seem like super intimidating, but what you have to understand is like business is a game and like, and your agency is a game and like every month and every week, you're like learning more and more and more. And it's just like, okay, what is next? And things just start to make sense to you. Like you're signing up clients yeah. on, a, on a on a service charge and like, hang on a second, could I do this? Or, oh, I've noticed that five of my clients are struggling to close their leads. Should I have appointment setters in the company? And like, you get you often get told all these things and you hear them from other agencies, but they're super intimidating. So you never implement them until you actually go through the motions yourself of like that progression of your service. Like we're now at a point it was, it took us ages to do performance-based fees with, with, with the e-com. We're now at a point where we're looking at equity deals. And we're like, how can we take equity of these companies? Because we know we can get results. That's a concept that I wouldn't have even dreamed of understanding four years ago. But it's just this like progression of you as a person, as a business owner. And it comes very naturally, I think. No, 100%. And I think like to just like, if you could simplify it as much as possible, it's literally just like the variable of time spent in the business model. It's like... That's all it is. Cause I think like someone at level one right now, like just starting the agency would just be like listening to what we're talking about. Like, what are they like? What is even happening? Like, I don't even know how like that would even, I don't even know what, what to do or even think about executing on that. Um, and it's literally just that. It's just like, how long have you spent doing the thing? It's like, that's literally it. Like we've been, like, I've been doing this for just over four years now. It's like, that's, that's like in the grand scheme of things, that's not that long in a business model, but compared to the average person that gets into a make money online business model, that's a very long time. Like most people don't do it for even six months really intensely and consistently. Um, and so like, if you can just like think about, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it on a, like an at least three to four year time horizon. That's like your, your set, like you're literally guaranteeing success. Like if you just do it for a long enough time, like seriously, like there's nothing there's nothing that could that could stop it. This is the thing, but like you, most people are not actually going to get past the, even like a couple of months of just sticking to one thing. And that's why it's just so important. You hear it ran down your throat all the time. People say to you, like the most important thing is just picking one thing and sticking to it. Like that actually is the fundamentally the most important thing. I suppose a good like way just to like for, for anyone to actually relate to this right now and probably a feeling that you still have. And I, I mean, I certainly still have. Um, it's like when you, it's when like someone like us looks at like, let's say we look into the mind of like, I don't know, Jeff Bezos running like a multi, multi, multi mm. billion dollar company, right? Um, you, you, you're you just looking at that and you're like, how the fuck does that person's brain actually even be able to yeah. that? But that person is just someone else who's just come, like this expedited along the process. Sure, their business grew faster and at a quicker rate, but their brain was forced to develop and their business acumen was forced to develop. I mean, it was a gradual thing. They didn't just like click their fingers and one week later had a billion dollar business. It's like, and that concept in itself is hard for even us to understand how we're going to get to that point. I mean, you don't have to get to a billion, obviously, but even if that's like- no. 10, 20, 50, 100 million, whatever your goal is, like 
it's a natural progression across the journey, but you have to be consistent in business at just making something work for a long time. It doesn't have to be the same business model, but like your business acumen is just going to grow over years and years. And there's nothing actually else that you can do. No books, no podcasts that are actually like you. People listen to Alex Hamozzi's YouTube videos all the time. It's a guy making hundred million a year, right? But if people are not even making two grand a month, you're not, you're listening to concepts, but they're not actually going to hit you until you're at the point no. when you can implement them or till you actually have the epiphany yourself and you'll be like now that actually makes sense beforehand it just sounded like a good quote do you know what yeah. i mean and i think that's when like the compounding effect of experience just really starts to take off because like in the beginning like all the learning that you're doing you're building it on like no foundation and so every single thing that you're learning is like it it just computes less and it doesn't like add as much value to your overall kind of skill set. Mm-hmm. Whereas like when you're, you know, four years in, every single thing that you're learning, you're like connecting so many more dots and you're like, okay, I can see how that would work. I can see how that would work. Or like, no, that that's a that's a mm-hmm. shit idea. Or like, oh my God, like that. So like like we're gonna make heaps of money with this thing. And so that's where you just it kind of accelerates because every new thing that you're learning, you're just building on more and more and more of a foundation. And like yeah. I don't know, one of like the Thing that's like it's not uncommon for people to say but that how you know in the jeff bezos example you know the amount of incremental like the incremental difference in how much money like someone like that is making is like i don't even know what the number would be but like something like twenty thousand times more than like what we're making or i'm making on a on a yearly basis mm-hmm. and someone like that is not they don't have twenty thousand times more time than us in a day and they don't and they're not twenty thousand times more more like they're not twenty thousand I'm smarter than us whatsoever. So they literally just have better skills and experience and better reference points. And yeah. so like, I think that's like a powerful realization because you know that like you're just, the only thing stopping you is like ex- is skills and experience and those are things that can be attained. And so you just mm. have to get them. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. And I actually think like knowledge in some ways can actually be a bit of a curse. Like it, it, to some people, like, like I think people are obsessed with like, I had someone in a mastermind this weekend and the biggest thing I could see, like he's been struggling to push past the 20 10 month point and he's been struggling to get past that for like six months now. And I could see straight through like why he was at this point because he was thinking way too high level for the point he's actually in in business. Like he's mm. like, he's I'm teaching how to build an entire appointment setting system so we can start be doing outreach and so on. And he's doing email for e-com and, and that's what works it's working really well right now. And like, and he's reaching out to 500 new companies a day before he's even got 50 companies a day working like his, yeah. his, his cost per acquisition and his open rates and his response rates, like they're all over the place, but he's thinking so high level. He's like, well, I need free appointment setters. I'm going to do 500 emails a day. And it, and why isn't it working? And I'm like, dude, you're not even looking at low level. Like you're not even doing yeah. the outreach levels of someone who's just started an agency. You haven't even got that working yet. So that's why you're you're at 20K and you think that you've made it, but you're not actually, you're, you're thinking way too high level for your, your actual knowledge base or your actual position right now. And I think that actually stops a lot of people even getting started as well. Like people mm. will watch like Alex knows these, even my videos, like, and that's why I try on YouTube, try to keep things as, as entry level as possible. Because if I started having these kinds of conversations all the time, no one would actually get anything done. Like, yeah. what, you know? No, 100%. Because like, uh, yeah, you need to take it one level at a time. Because like, if like, like I wouldn't go to an agency owner that's doing 500K a month for, to be my next coach, because that's just like too many levels beyond where I'm at right now. And I need like the practical stuff that I can implement from someone that's kind of, kind of recently kind of made that transition i think that's like the best thing that you can do always is just like look for someone like look for the next coach and look for the next mentor that's like a few levels above you like if you're at 20k per month like learn from the some the person that's currently at 50k per month because like the recency of the information and like the recency of like what they've done to implement to make that transition is just so much more directly applicable and they're going to be able to convey it a lot better and like if you're at like zero like you should be learning from like the 10k per month per Person, mm-hmm. or if you're at you know at 100k you want to and you want to get a 250 like learn from the 250 person and so i think that that's like it's just like one level at a time and like learn from the person that's kind of made the transition somewhat recently that's that's so true it is it is so so true because it's like it's like and I, I, I'm one of the reasons why I launched this mastermind is because I want to be able to teach people the stuff that I actually am going through right now. And this battle, yes. this complete ongoing battle that we face 
in the academy is that I'm constantly pulling myself back into a place that I was four years ago. And so we have to bring in external agencies and top students have to te teach and, re and teach their information. And we have to do a lot of consultancy with people that are actually closer to that 10K a month point to actually implement those strategies because it's, it's very different here than it is like down here. And so I, I completely agree with you. It's very important that whoever you're learning from, you're learning from someone who's close to your level or has access to that level like in abundance. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Because, because it, it is all about relevancy of, in, of, of information and, and how recent that information actually is. Because um, yeah. yeah. the market's changing so rapidly all the time. And especially like, I think the more that like our industry grows, um, being just like marketing agency owners and being a marketing agency owner, the more, um, yeah, the more rapidly it evolves because the, there's more competition in general and, yeah, competition breeds sophistication. And so there's just like things change more rapidly, like, you know, the cold outreach scripts, you know, get outdated more quickly yeah. or the, the client acquisition strategies get outdated more quickly or the niche, the, the trend of the best niche changes more rapidly. Just like, so I think in general, like the, I think the probably the best things that you can ever be doing as an agency owner is like making sure that you have some way to like consistently be analyzing and listening to like your own clients and also your market in terms of like the peers in your in your space because if you're like always listening to and like observing like what your clients need and then also seeing what other the other ways that marketing agency owners are serving the market and seeing how like offers and service models are evolving then you've always got your finger on the pulse of like what what people need and so that's kind of what I'm realizing more recently is just like, cause it's so obvious, like, yeah, listen to the market, listen to your client, but people don't do it. And they just like focus on like sales. They focus on like, how can I do my branding, my content and like whatever. But um, yeah, I feel like that's like just one of the biggest things. I would, I would add one more thing to that. And it's like listening to your intuition. Cause I think a lot of For people, sure. <laughs> like, like I think a lot of people underestimate like what their own brain is capable of, 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 of achieving and coming up with just by like observing. So like, look at what everyone else is doing and observe. But if you have a gut feeling of like, oh, I want to try this or let me put this in my outreach script. Like those are the people that actually, like everything I've done, like I've taken the, and it's, it's likewise to yourself. You've, you've we've taken the principles of what is being successful in an industry, but then used our own thought process and our own brain to just come up with our way of doing things yeah. and that's and if you're always carbon copying someone else and you're always just following what has been done before you what you're actually doing is you're following the second hand like you're because the person who's going to get the most results is the person who did it the first time like the, the one who had the original idea if i've got a subject line that's working really well in my outreach the minute i share it right it's gonna work but it's gonna work it's for saturated. a couple of months <laughs> Right, the minute loads of other people start using it, right? I was the one who yeah. had the, the the max success when I first came up with that subject line. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, but people, everyone's capable of coming up with those things. They just don't trust their own intuition because they're so. I need to follow someone who's already done it before me, and you just actually just need to take the psychology of why that person's done the thing and just come up with the actual nitty gritty the yourself. Yeah, no, I, that's yeah, that's so so true, and I actually think that that's pro like probably. I think that's probably like a very commonality between like people that reach higher levels is just having more self-confidence in being okay with just trying shit because you think it's a good idea um, mm. and not caring if it's like just, just reducing your fear, your fear of failure because mm. yeah. Cause like, I think like confidence, confidence comes from confidence and like when you start to develop more confidence in like the thing that you're doing, mm. you kind of prove to yourself like, like I'm actually kind of good at this. Like if like I've, I've been doing this for a while, like I've gotten some good results. Like, like, what if I try this? What if I try that? And like, you know, some of the first times that I started coaching agents here and it's like, you notice straight away, it's like, they're looking for like the script. They're looking for the template. They're looking for the framework. They're looking for like, what's the perfect method for that thing. And it's like, well, I kind of, I just made that up. I just had to go, like, I just did that because it like, I felt like a good idea at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's probably like, not to get like too like, <laughs> deep or whatever but like it's probably like kind of just from you know just programming from the way like from like the school system of like we kind of come up the ent our entire framework of like learning is through an authority figure and like just having yeah. all of our information filtered through just like someone teaching us stuff and so we never think to like just go out there and be creative and execute and like just 
put shit out there. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Like we are literally built in a society in, in no matter what country you're from to suppress your own creativity. Like, yeah. because like creativity moves us away from a point where we can all work normal jobs and we can all feed into the capitalist machine. Right. So like we, we are, li- that is literally ingrained within us. So like naturally when we have ideas, we like, Oh, let me validate them. But then we go to seek validation from people that aren't even in the position that we want to be in. So we ask our friends, our family and all these people that do not actually have, of course, people we love that, but are completely unqualified to give us an opinion. Right. It's very rare that we ask someone, like, what do you think of this? And they actually are in a position that we want to be in. And if that person says no, we still listen to them and it affects our subconscious. Whereas like, if we just stopped doing that and just trusted our own intuition, like most people would be a lot more successful. And that's something like, I think you learn in business over time. But I mean, it's like, I don't know if you, did you ever see my surely not ad the book when I like had the 50 minute agency? Did you see that? Like, it was like, yeah. You saw that? So that was like some just, weird like ad i just came it just came to me i'll see if we can throw it up it it came to me and i was just like oh let me just do something stupid because i like thought about like how do i get on with people in my normal life oh i just act like a bit of an idiot sometimes so i would like created that ad and it was like against any of the click funnels formats of like hook story offer and all of that stuff that everybody teaches you need to do i spent 20k on that ad and generated 400k in revenue which is crazy (laughs) it's like the best performing ad i ever had and it was just me talking to myself it was just strange and it was just like a random idea that you had a random idea and you just trust your gut and you're like let's do it but i remember how nervous i was at at the start of doing it and also like when we just hosted this mastermind this weekend um the i said to the first thing i said to people was if you're looking for a miracle cure if you're looking for the one fix that's going to get you from 20k 40k 50k to 100k 200k a month you're not going to find it this weekend i'm going to help you realize those things within yourself and realize how to differentiate yourself but i don't have what's this this script or this format or this subject line which is going to suddenly help you get to where i am i haven't withheld information like you just need to use your intuition uh, yeah 100 percent. yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> cool man listen Liam I'm, I'm conscious of time I don't want to keep people watching like an hour and a half video that. I'm sure That's like people would love to do Thank so you. this has been, <laughs> been an awesome conversation man like I've, I've really really enjoyed it and I'd, it'd be great to get you on for another time um, I always recommend people over to you for for, for for real estate anyone who comes to me for real estate I'm like speak to Liam like drop Absolutely, Liam a man. message I appreciate um, it yeah <laughs> you've sent me a lot of people <laughs> and, I, and I extend that to anyone who's in like local business marketing make sure you reach out to Liam um, and, and on that note do you are there any like major platforms that you are you're on at the minute that I can get people to yeah they can I can put a link in the description. To be honest, I'm only like just starting my YouTube journey and I'm gonna be posting a lot more consistently on my YouTube channel and kind of making that my priority. Um I got a Facebook group which is called the Gen S M A. Um honestly not super active in it right now. Like every now and then we do a live QA and I post some value videos in there, but I'm making YouTube much top priority. And so it's just Liam Casey on YouTube and I got the blue background profile okay. picture. So if that's what, where you want to check me out, I'm gonna be putting out some stuff on there. Love it. Love it. I'll, I'll put a link in the description so everybody can see that. Um, Appreciate it. Any, any final things for anyone who's just starting their agency? Just, yeah, just, just stick with it. <laughs> just don't like, uh, yeah, just don't, don't chop and change too much. Just stick with a good, stick with a good niche. Don't try and reinvent the wheel from the get go. Um, you don't like on that kind of like whole intuition thought train. I actually probably wouldn't recommend that at the very start, like at the very start, just like just model success and just kind of validate the base level skills of what it takes to run it, to run an agency and get your traction with your first like eight to 12 K per month. Um, and then build on top of that and scale from there and just stick and just stick with it. Um, and then you'll just, if you keep with it after getting to that stage, you'll over a long enough time horizon, you'll keep leveling up. Amazing. Love it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Liam, thanks so much, cool. dude. It's been great speaking to you. And guys, I hope Absolutely, you enjoyed the man. video. And Appreciate it. Chat to you in a bit. Cheers.